Lots of businesses rely on credit to carry out their operations and strategy, whether it's for an expansion, investment, or to manage liquidity. Hence, recognizing factors that influence interest rates is critical to success. Note that I said recognizing, not forecasting interest rates. I'm going to say a little bit more about that later. Most are aware of the Bank of Canada and know of the existence of an interest rate that the bank controls. But what is exactly the role of the Bank of Canada? And more importantly, what impact does it have on interest expenses your operation faces? The bank serves several functions, including printing money, lending to banks, and most importantly, its mandate is to keep inflation in check. You can think of inflation as the average price increase in the economy over time. I'm sure some of you have heard the phrase, in my days, this product only costs X dollars. And now the price of the same commodity is higher. Well, that's what inflation is. Erosion of the value of money and is reflected by a general price increase across all sectors. The Bank of Canada's main objective is to keep inflation low and stable. Having price stability is good for consumers and businesses as it makes it easier for them to plan. The bank can increase or decrease inflationary pressures by changing its main interest rate, its policy rate, which is called the overnight rate. This rate is reviewed eight times a year at predetermined dates. For example, if inflation is expected to run above the Bank of Canada's 2% target for inflation, the bank would raise its overnight rate with the purpose of slowing down the economy. The opposite is also true. Expectations of inflation running low would mean a cut in the overnight rate. The key word is expectations. It's not necessarily about where inflation is at the moment that the bank does something with interest rates, but mostly where inflation is projected to be. And when you talk about projections, you know they can sometimes be wrong. And to understand future movements in interest rates, the bank needs to consider a large set of economic factors, both domestic and global. When the overnight rate changes, other interest rates usually move in the same direction. For example, the prime rate moves right away with changes in the overnight rate. And variable rates, paid under a mortgage or a line of credit, would be impacted right away as a variable rate is based off the prime rate. So here there's a direct connection in this case between the overnight rate, the prime rate, and a variable rate. It's a little different for long-term interest rates. A five-year fixed mortgage rate is based on the bond markets. And bond rates depend on other factors than just the overnight rate or the Bank of Canada. Bond traders sell and buy government bonds and bonds of corporations and financial institutions. So there's a free market that sets the value of these bonds. Consider the following chart with two critical interest rate benchmarks, the prime rate and the Government of Canada five-year bond yield. The prime rate moves when there's a change in the overnight rate. And you see this happens at various intervals of time, somewhat of a stepwise pattern on the chart. Compare this to the pattern in the Government of Canada five-year bond yield. The rates financial institutions charge on long-term loans rely on a benchmark such as the Government of Canada five-year bonds. When the yields go up, so will the cost of funds of financial institutions, and thus interest rates charged to borrowers on long-term fixed-rate mortgages would also go up. Note that the patterns are not identical. We see the five-year bond rate move up and down at times when the prime rate is flat. That speaks to how useful it is not only to follow what the Bank of Canada does or say, but also follow what financial markets think of the economy. One strategy is to have more than one mortgage with different terms and a combination of fixed and variable rates. This allows the borrower's debt to be priced at different times. Of course, this must be weighted against the complexity of managing multiple mortgage terms. Remember, the objective is to recognize what can influence the patterns in interest rates. But it's not possible to forecast interest rates with any degree of precision. In the case of variable rate loans, it is also prudent to make sure that your business can afford to make payments if rates go up by 1%, 2%, or even more as a result of evolving economic conditions.